and welcome to our August edition of Sports Highlights right here, our back to school edition, of course, and hope everybody's having a great, great summer. Our sports interview show since February of 1992. It comes on Mondays on cable TV at 7 a.m., 2 p.m., and 7 p.m., weekends at 9 a.m., right there on Cox Cable 47 517 and NPSTV.com live stream at the same time, archived on YouTube and social media. It's a pleasure to welcome our first guest, uh, George Bolanis. He is the former head basketball coach at the College of William Mary, the tribe, in the mid-70s. George, good to see you. Same here, Greg. Very good. You had some uh, great players back then, of course, uh, John Lowenhop, Mike Enoch, Matt Courage. You really put William Mary on the map. Yeah, we, we had three straight winning seasons, which that was unusual back at that time, but we had good players. And back then, you even played Christopher Newport. Yeah, we did because uh, Bev Vaughn was a good friend of mine. Right. And he said, can I have a game with you? I said, sure. And uh, so Bev was a friend, so we did it. How was the Southern Conference back then? It was good. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Furman had, uh, at that time, they had two seven-footers. And Williams, who just died, who was at Florida, been at Florida State and some other places, was the head coach there. And we, we lost to them in the Southern Conference final with them having a 7'2", 7-footer, 6'9", and a guard, a guard from Indiana was about like 6'2", another one about 6'5". They were big. We had a bunch of freshmen out there, but we, we, play, we had to play them in their place because mm -hmm. the, the high seed team in those days, you went to their place. So we won our first two games and then had to go there and play them at, at their place. Yeah, I used to always go to Bruce Park Hills basketball camp when I was a kid, of course. Uh, you were the predecessor to Bruce. Right. And Rod and I always joke about, uh, when I do see Rod the last two years at his games at Howard, that uh, the following year after you retired from Wayne Mary, Dean Smith came to Wayne Mary and Wayne Mary beat them. But all the players were yours. Yeah. How did you feel about that? Oh, I felt good because Bruce, Bruce was like, a, like, we're like brothers. Right. So, and those kids love Bruce. Bruce. Bruce was an outstanding coach. I, I was lucky to have him as an assistant. Ed Ashnell hired him as an assistant. And after a year, Ed left, and I got the head job, and then Bruce stayed with me. And uh, But Bruce was an outstanding coach. I knew that he was going to do bigger things. Mm -hmm. He went from William Murray to Penn State, and then he got just tired of it, mm -hmm. got out of it, and yeah. he came back and went to Ohio State as an assistant. And then he finally just got out of it. That was it for him. And then, yeah. of course, his younger brother, Barry, who played for Virginia, right. uh, of course, uh, was the coach after Bruce. After Bruce, yep, he was He was after Bruce, and uh, Barry uh, was smart enough to get out of that stuff and went back to Virginia <laughs> and, and became a fundraiser, and it's a better job. Kind of like what you did with the shoe business. Yes, I, I, I left uh, William Murray, went to Pro Kids, which was a competitor of Converse. There wasn't any, any Nike in those mm -hmm. days, and then from there, it, the way I got that job was a guy named Billy DeAngelis mm -hmm. was a great player at St. Joe's. He'd come down to William Murray and just play with my players and kick their tails. Mm -hmm. And he played the NBA and played over in Europe. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he got me a job for pro, ki uh, pro Kids. From there, I went to Puma for four years and my boss was York Larris, mm -hmm. who was a great player at Carolina and played in the NBA for quite a few years. From there, I went to Nike for 30 years. Wow, so yeah. you found your home right here in the shoe business. Yes. But before Wayne Mary, you were at Walsingham. Yes, I was at Walsingham uh, for three years. And uh, the way I got that job, Warren Mitchell was the, was the head uh, basketball coach at Wayne Mary. And I had gotten married and wanted to come back east. And Warren's the one told me there's a job open as athletic director and basketball coach at Walsingham. Mm -hmm. So, I got the job there, it was for three years. We had some good teams there, and uh, the, the Sisters of Mercy were just wonderful to work for. Oh, absolutely. And of course, at the time you were at Walsingham and Wayne Mary, you look at Wayne Mary, great environment, great campus, excellent education uh, back in the 70s, of course, and Jimmy Laycock came there in 1980s, a football right. coach. But you, everything is measured on championships. Right. And what do you think is their main reason that Wayne Mary has never been to the NCAA basketball tournament? It, when I coached there, and it's still a, a problem, it's better now than it was, but when uh, the lowest college board scores I had on a team was 1150. And that's excellent. 
and that's and that that's a good college board. But I had a, a kid from uh, when John Lornhart played at, at uh, William and Mary. He he played for a great high school coach uh, in New York, uh, and his teammate came down to visit William and Mary at the same time, and uh, Whitey Rigsby, who played at Villanova. Mm -hmm. Well, he wanted to come with John at William and Mary, but his board scores at that time they wanted at least 1150 with a three seven three eight. Mm -hmm. That was hard, and he was like. He was really a smart kid, and he got scared mm -hmm. and landed up going to Villanova and became a great player at Villanova. He would have been with that with with that team. And there you go. And and George Belanis is joining us with his time, talent, and treasure. The former head basketball coach for the tribe of William and Mary, of course. And we've done a lot of interviews over the years with William and Mary. But um, in my opinion. Um, Lowen Hopp and Key Saplicki were the two biggest names in William Mary basketball from the 70s on. Right. The, the top player, but he didn't finish, right. uh, was Ron Satterthite. Sure. He was a sixth man at DeMatha with Ader Jan Dantley, okay, who went to the pros, became Hall of Famer. And they had all, Billy Langlow played at Virginia. Yeah, of course. And he was a great player there. Well, Ronnie, first two years was great. Everything went great. And then all of a sudden, he got to a point where he wasn't going to class like he should be mm -hmm. and so on. Make a long story short, he dropped out of school. He would have been an NBA player. Mm -hmm. They called him six, uh, Silky Smooth. Right. He was 6'4", six, six, fast, quick, could, I mean, could do everything. Right, right. And if we'd have had him with th those guys, we would have gone to NCAA. Yeah, and there was always a little rivalry up in the D.C. area, you know, with um, John Thompson and Morgan Wooten. There, there was no love right. loss between those two. Right. Um, both of them have since passed on, of course, but they were great basketball players that oh. came out of there. I mean, you remember yeah. Derek Wittenberg, Sidney Lowe, Adrian Danley. Adrian yeah. Danley is one of the best players that Notre Dame has ever had. Oh, absolutely. You know, my son played at DeMatha right. for Morgan, and, and he went, when he went up there, it was, Morgan was a good friend of mine. I wanted him to have that experience of playing with a great coach in a great conference because that was like the ACC mm -hmm. when they played back in those days. And and DeMath is an all all boys Catholic school. Sure. And it's about I think it's not quite a thousand, maybe it's a, like nine hundred or eight hundred and some uh, bo all boys from nine to twelve. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a great experience for him to. Uh, for three years, and that's why he got into college coaching. Yeah, a lot of those kids that. Uh played for DeMatha, played at NC State, yeah. and they played for Norm Sloan. People don't realize that in 83, when NC State won the national championship, a lot of those seniors as freshmen played for Norm Sloan. Yeah, they sure did. Before the late Jim Valvano. Exactly. Sloan was a oh, great yeah. coach. Yeah. Absolutely. That, yeah. Sidney Lowe, and, yeah. and, yep, they, they, they were the backcourt, and uh, they were two great guards and, 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 uh, and won a national t a championship on – the DeMatha guy took a shot from outside, yeah. and it was short, and the yeah. other guy came in and ducked it and won national title. Yeah, all DeMatha. Yeah. Let's talk about your son, Rod, of course. He was mm -hmm. at Notre Dame for decades. 21 years. Yeah, I mean, he really, almost like the Bill Guthridge yeah. to Dean Smith, he was very loyal. In fact, I think Guthridge was uh, at um, Wayne Mary uh, as a coach and against um, uh, Wayne Mary when he was at North Carolina as the assistant to Dean Smith yes. when uh, Wayne Mary upset uh, North, Carolina. North Carolina. So Guthridge was with him back then as well. Right. But your son was a loyal assistant to Mike Bray. Oh yes, he was. See, Mike was the assistant coach at DeMatha when he played at DeMatha. Yeah. And then his senior year, Mike got the assistant job at Duke. Yeah. And we were at the NCAA tournament down in uh, uh, in New Orleans, and Mike told me, he says, "Should I should I go over and talk to uh, Mike Szeszka?" Shoot, yeah, you should talk to him. And so he did. And Mike Szeszki, that's why he was a great coach, he understood that Mike Bray, being a DeMatha guy, mm -hmm. being from the D.C. area, you're going to get players. Right. Plus, Mike Bray's father was a great football coach, and his mother was an Olympic swimmer. Yeah, so he came from great athletes. Yeah. You look at uh, your tenure back in the mid-'70s, of course, and you look at Jim Beheim, who just retired from Syracuse. His first year at Syracuse was 76 77, but he was an assistant when you were the head coach at William Mary. That tenure, you don't see it that often. No, no, you don't see it anymore. I knew, I knew Jim way back when he was assistant coach. Right. Uh, and he was, uh, 
he was really a – you could tell he's going to be a good coach. And he was – he played at Syracuse. Right. And he was – you know, his teammate was a, a great player at Syracuse that played the pros. And I'm trying to think his name. That, but he was he was a great player there, a guard, and went on to the pros for a lot of years. And Jim was his partner mm-hmm. in the backcourt. Yeah, I'm not sold that Coach Beheim wanted to step down. I I saw him on TV the other day at the um, the basketball tournament because the Syracuse has got a team, the Beheim team, yeah. and it still seemed like he wanted that one more year. But you got to remember, all those that have power are afraid to lose it right. as well. Eventually, it, it changed. But I think what has changed is that NIL. Oh. And um, paying players and oh, all that stuff. It, it, it really hasn't worked out that well. No, and I think I think what's going to happen in the future, this thing is going to stop. Yeah. And it's going to have to get Congress to stop yeah. it, to help out, to stop it, to pay players. I just, I'm old school. Yeah. I just think, I think that you can do some things. Yeah. Especially for kids based on need that need some things. But this thing's gotten out of hand. Yeah. When, when you got the guy that got, leaves Michigan, who played the Matha. Right. The center. He played at Michigan, and he lands up going now to Kansas, and he's going to make those rumors that he's got like five, six, seven million dollars a year right. to play. And a lot of those guys will never sniff the NBA. No, the NBA is a different level. It's a lo- to- to- different level. Totally. But uh, talking to George Milanis, the former Wayne Mary head basketball coach, what a great environment it is at Wayne Mary Hall. Just a great oh, environment. Oh, it's a great. It's a great place. You know, when they built it, they built it really big, mm-hmm. and. Uh, they didn't finish the seats in it. Yeah. But when we played uh, Virginia Tech, when they were ranked in the top 10, we beat them, we upset them there. Uh, we filled that place and had to bring bleaches for the end zone, the open right. end zone. So that was the largest crowd I've ever seen that we murdered. They used to have those crazy white towels, right? Exactly. And, yeah. that, and that was the guys now that are, two of them were in, were in the NFL right. for about 20 some years. Yeah. And they're the ones started it. Mm-hmm. And it was clock work. Orange or something mm-hmm. that movie. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and they, they wore the helmets, the white yeah. deals, and they took the. They were the one that banned the NCAA banned bats hitting yeah. the, the, the 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 poles there, yeah. making all this noise. But yeah, they started that. How was the travel back then? Because it seems like a lot of the coaches and the players they don't like to be on the road that much. Right. Well, back in those days, we did everything by by car and bus. Wow. Uh, that's the way it was. There were no private planes. Rod got to. Uh, Notre Dame. See, he was at Colgate before Notre Dame, yeah. so he knew how what that those bus rides were like. And then uh, with William Murray, we never had uh, private planes to take us anywhere. But he had a pretty lavish uh, travel when he was at Notre Dame. Oh yeah, they had the budget and the money. The budget and the money. Uh, when you got big football like that. You yeah, have yeah. Football dictates it, but basketball is still very good. And yeah. Notre, Notre Dame is an elite school, and I hope your son can use that to his advantage to one day become a head coach. Yeah, that's he, the goal, correct? Yeah, that's his goal. He'd like to be a head coach, and uh, he uh, he's. I'll be honest with you. He's a real good coach. Right. He's really he's had good, not because he's my son, but he worked for the best coach in, in, in uh, uh, Morgan Wooten, played right. for him and uh, learned a lot. And a guy that really was a great coach that was a math assistant there too, who played with Kareem in high school, was Jack Bruin. Mm-hmm. Now he passed when my son was up there in Colgate. Right. Uh, he's the one who brought my son up to Colgate and he died of cancer at like 50 some years old. And he was probably the best assistant coach that was ever at, at uh, DeMatha. Great coach. And I got to tell you, your son handled it very well because Notre Dame played Howard last year. And your yeah. son just spent over uh, double decades, yeah, over uh, 20 years with Bray. And, you know, they had to do the handshake afterwards. But yeah. your son's a real gentleman. Well, I appreciate just that. Just like you are. Well, all the best. Give us some uh, what's lacking today. Is it the fundamentals? What do people need to work on now? You mean at, as far as basketball, at basketball in general? Well, they got to get this all this paying the players yeah. and transfer this transfer thing. I had pick, pick up the paper and I call Rod. Said Rod, who's leaving? Yeah, Can't who's coming up. and going? Yeah, you have to look online. The, all the best, George. And, uh, thank you. So you are much. Greek heritage like myself. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate very good. it. <laughs> all right, that was George Milanos, good friend of Nick Matthews as well, uh, former Walsingham basketball coach in Williamsburg, and also the former William Mary head basketball coach, and also had a great shoe career as well. Stay tuned for our next guest as our August show rolls on.
You're watching NNPS TV. Catch sports highlights on Mondays at 7, 2, and 7, and on Saturdays and Sundays at 9 a.m. Visit us online at nnpstv.com to view all your favorite episodes. NNPS TV, watching education happen. And welcome to our second segment of our August show. Glad you're with us. Greg Bicavaris for more. Log on to nnpstv.com. It's a pleasure now to talk to Anthony Sam. He's an electronic clock operator, does a lot of football in the area. He'll elaborate in just a moment. I want to thank George Bolanis, the former William Mary head basketball coach, for being our first guest. Anthony, good to see you. Hey, likewise, Greg. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Um, I live in Newport News. I've been in Newport News since 1993. Uh, before that, I was in uh, home of Louisiana as a Navy recruiter. Right. I, sp I spent three years there as a Navy recruiter. I did a couple of local cable shows there. Right. And um, then s since I've been, like I said, since I've been here, um, I, I did the rest of my time in the Navy. I retired in 2000. And I retired from Norfolk Naval Shipyard in 2015, and I've been involved with the PFOA since the 2015 season. Yeah. I do... Uh, the, I do high school football games wherever the PFOA has a clock operator. Right. And that's in Williamsburg, or I should say James City County. Could be Smithfield, Surrey, could be Todd. Um, at one time, I used to do games at Hampton Christian mm -hmm. over in Hampton. Yeah. Also York County, too? Oh, yeah, York County. Definitely York County. Uh, York County, I do a lot of uh, JV and middle school games at, with York County. Absolutely. Talking to Anthony Sam, and of course, you're a background. You're, just, you're a Denver guy. Yes, yes, I am. I'm from... Uh, Actually, I'm from Westminster, Colorado, which is outside of Denver. Yeah. But I, my parents moved there when I was five years old in 1964. And, uh, yeah, I'm pretty much a diehard Denver fan. Um, I like the Broncos. I'm all about the Nuggets. Right. And the Colorado Avalanche. Well, there you go. And, of course, the baseball team. And then, and then there's the Rockies. When yeah. I, when, in my time with, the, with baseball, was they had AAA. Yeah. And I'm really into Denver AAA baseball. I know quite a bit about the Denver Bears. Well, let's talk about the electronic clock operator. For Varsity High School football, it's 12 minutes. Yes, sir. For JV, it's usually 10. Well, JV and middle school games, they're 10-minute quarters. Right. And let's they, talk about the difference in yeah. everything. Yeah, there's there's 10-minute, or JV games are 10-minute quarters, and uh, middle school games, they're 8-minute quarters. Mm -hmm. But in JV and middle school, they play with, they call 95 mechanics, where they the game is... It's based on places that didn't have lights, mm -hmm. so they try to play, you know, fight against the sun. And so the clock, it will stop like a normal game, but there's certain instances where they'll start the clock on the wind and not on the snap. And then in the, in the half, this year, at the end of each half, in the last two minutes, they go back to a regular, like a, just the regular clock. Right. Now, what are some of the pros and cons? Because the vantage point, when we broadcast the games at Todd, sometimes the light poles have been in the way. Oh, yeah. Or the, what is the uh, – you definitely have to have good peripheral vision. Oh, I, I, definitely. For, the key to, for me, personally, I feel being as a clock operator, the key is you have to find a place to sit. Yeah. You have to have a seat. You have to be right at the 50-yard line because you have to see the whole field. And, and you have to be able to see over the fans – because the fans, they're, they're going to stand up. There's not, you can't tell fans not to stand, sure. especially on the home side. Right. So I have to be able to see, you know, through the fans. I have to be able to see the officials on the field. And I have to pay attention when I have to start and stop the clock. Right. So, you know, you talk about the different parameters. Then the officials have their stuff that they deal with. Then timeouts. Right. Then, of course, the running clock, too, after 35 right. points yes, in the second half. after 35 points in the second half, mm -hmm. they, in Virginia, they go to a... a and go to a running clock, and that's just what it means. It, it, the clock runs. Now, they will stop it for, like, if there's an injury or if there's a timeout or if there's a score, but for the most part, the clock will run. Yeah, because uh, you never know what the score is going to be. I mean, you've exactly. seen the blowouts where it starts right in the third quarter. Yeah. I mean, so the game goes by pretty quick. But I guess, uh, you know, the PFOA is always looking for good officials. Always, always. And, and, and now they're, like, in the middle of their rec recruitment process, and they've started – getting ready for the upcoming season, but sure. they can always use people. Right. There's always, they won't turn anybody away that wants to come in an official. And it's good for, if someone really likes football, whether, and if they're, you know, really young, 
hey, there's people from the PFOA that have gone on to do, you know, major college football. And yeah. there's even possibly some that may get into the professional ranks. And, you know, you also have the chain crew. You're not going to start off as a referee. No, you start out as a chain crew. If, right. you're, if you come in to do, because um, the PFOA, they have the chain crews for Darling Stadium over in Hampton and Todd Stadium in Newport News. And so, yeah, they need, and they need, they need people to do that. And you get paid to do the chains if you're on a chain crew. I tell you, it's um, nothing like when Mike Smith was coaching Hampton and back in the day when Kaz was coaching at Bethel, they would work those referees oh, and officials. Honestly, I got to say, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I, but I did a lot of, uh, since 2019, I've done like every game of Todd. And yeah, Mike Smith is a character on the yeah. field. Yeah, of course, he's been retired now for a couple right. of years. But uh, we're talking to Anthony Sam. He's an electronic clock operator of high school football. 12-minute quarters, they play in varsity. Like you said, mostly 10 at the uh, JV level. And uh, in Yorktown, the JV level seems very organized. Well, I got to say, not, not just Yorktown, James City County. Yeah, all, tell us all, about it. Okay, the... the the James City County Schools, uh, uh, Jamestown, Warhill, Lafayette, um, Bruton, um, they all play at Cooley Field, mm -hmm. their JV games, and it's all well organized. They have clock operators, the athletic directors come there. Right. They have, you know, concessions. No, they don't have big crowds. You know, they have people come to watch their kids play. But it's, uh, I, I like doing the JV games, and I, and I really like doing JV games up at uh, Wanner. Mm -hmm. don't, don't, they don't do them much there now, but they used to do a lot when they were re renovating Cooley. Yeah. And it, those fields are easy, because I can, I can see the field. The, the fields are all lined. There's, you know, there's, uh, they're PAT fields. Mm -hmm. So they're not, um, you know, this, they take well, they're, they're well, they're well maintained. Yeah, and Cooley Field was a place that Lafayette played a lot back in the day. Lafayette's had some great teams. Lafayette used to be in the Peninsula District, you know, so did Tab as well, you know. So you look at all the restructuring, but they kind of left the conferences alone. It's not like college football where they're changing every year. There's still a lot of tradition right. in high school football. Right. And see, high school for me is, is that part is kind of hard to, I don't quite understand why they, to me, I think they've kind of taken away a lot of rivalries. Yeah. Because now they group everybody by their, uh, the size of the school or, sure, you know, whatever class it is. Class A or, or whatever, 3A or 4A. Sure. But I think when I moved to Newport News, I know that Tab was still playing in the uh, Peninsula District because I, I saw them play uh, Hampton when Hampton had Ronald Curry. Yeah, Charlie Hobus, and of course, he had uh, as well several great players like Terry Kirby that played for Tab, too. But there's so much great football over here in the Peninsula. And, of course, now we're going to see Tommy Raymond back at Denby High School. Right. Well, yes, and, and in fact, Tommy Raymond, I, uh, he did the uh, – he he sponsored. He was part of the, the sponsorship that did the the city series, my cool. city series. Yeah, and they had the the all star game in in December at Darling. Sure. And uh, Tommy Reeman, I, I met him, and he's really. I, th I I thought he was a really nice guy. He was really nice to me. Right. And we, I'm going to look forward to doing uh, games at Todd. I'm looking forward to see how Demby plays this year. Right. He's coached a lot of different places. We did his games at Ferguson, Warwick, when he was over at Lansdowne. So. Of course, he's been a Gloucester, a Manor. Sure, he's been he's all over. Been in a lot of different places. And I also know this too. He he caught a touchdown pass from Terry Bradshaw in a college All Star game. Yeah, yeah, that's not bad as well. Of course, he went to Missouri too and uh, played briefly for the Chiefs. Talking to Anthony Sam, tell us about a typical game day for you. What's it like? Okay, typical game day for me. I'll, I'll just use one at the, at Todd. Mm -hmm. So the, the games at Todd, I have to be there. The officials like me there an hour before the game. Mm -hmm. So the games, the games was a seven o'clock kickoff. So I usually get there. I don't get there. I usually get there before six. Mm -hmm. I don't live very far, but I'm a person. I don't. I want to have as much time as I can to plan for whatever I got to do. Right. So I, I get there, and I, I, I usually have to make a couple of trips up in the press box. But I, I start out. My initial trip is I make sure that my clock is going to be ready. That I have. If I have to put new team names up there, I, I'll put the team names up there. Um, I'll make sure that the, you know, the clocks going the right way as far as the rundown. Mm -hmm. After I get all my things straight with the clock, then I go down and speak to the officials because mm -hmm. I have to meet with the officials before the game. And whatever instructions they have for me, whatever they want me to pay attention for, or if they want me, you know, if, if we might have an extended, like at Todd, they might have senior day or might be homecoming or the schools may be doing something. So I have to know if there's going to be extra time on the clock either before the game or at halftime. So sometimes at halftime, we got to do a 20-minute half. 
like when they have homecoming. So I, I go over all this with the officials prior to the game. And a lot of the Saturday games at Todd are during the day. Yes, so most of the games, in fact, the, since 2019, I've, I haven't done a game after 4 o'clock at Todd. Right. Or, I mean, I should say that I've had a 4 o'clock game, but nothing later than, than that. Yeah, back in the day when I was in high school, they would play Friday and Saturday night. And when so. I first moved here, yeah, yeah. they used to play doubleheaders. <laughs> yeah, on Saturday night. But uh, you talk about uh, what advice would you give to somebody that wants to do this on the side, part-time? Well, okay, what I would – first thing I would advise them to do is, okay, on from now until probably the 8th of August for sure – is I would go show up at Liberty Baptist uh, Church in Hampton because that's where the PFOA meets on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Mm -hmm. And I would go in and look for, I would ask either for a David Gear or a Steve Haygood, mm -hmm. and they could find out all the information there. Or they could go online and look for the PFOA site, and, the, and that will tell them how to contact the PFOA. But that's the best way to do it is they have to come and contact someone. Because even I do, I have to, I have to take a test to be a clock operator. Right. Um, you got to be alert first. Well, that too, most important. Yeah. Most I mean, important. But uh, first I got to pass the test before yeah, I can be alert. Yeah, exactly. Well, you never know what that test is going to have, but the test is just like we do on TV, show up on time and, right. you know, be prepared. That's half the battle. Because when you get there, you never know what's going to happen. But very good. Anthony, all the best to you, my friend. Electronic clock operator in high school football, but you've also done JV and other schools as yes, well. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. All the best to you. Hey, thank you. It was a pleasure to be on the show. Very good. My pleasure as well. I want to thank our great guest today, George Bolanis, the former Wayne Mary head basketball coach in the 70s. Also, Anthony Sam, electronic clock operator, originally from the Colorado area. And he does, of course, high school football. And our great crew here with our back to school special. Hope everybody's had a great summer. And this is our August 2023 edition of sports highlights for more, log on to NNPSTV.com. For Ray Price, his great crew, I'm Greg Bickavaris. We'll talk to you soon.